Hi, my name is Jake Vossenkemper, Director of Agronomy and Research here at Liquor Grow. Hi, I'm Katie Hess, Director of Sales and Marketing here at Liquor Grow. Jake, it's a beautiful November day here. We don't yeah. see many of these. Yeah, we better live it up because they're probably few and far between. Yes, and unfortunately, you have to go back and look at more research, but that's why I brought you out here today. We talk a lot about NP and K. I know you're really excited about zinc, and if Dr. Jake is excited about something, he's probably found something. So let's tell the <laughs> folks about what you've been finding. You know me too well, Katie. So. <laughs> Yeah, so right now, literally as we speak, and as soon as we get done here, I'm going back to look at more uh, plot data from 2023. But as you suggested on the Monday morning conference call, I talked about a starter fertilizer study that involved zinc. Okay, and to keep it brief, in this study, it was a starter evaluation study, and 10340 was a treatment in this study. Okay, and there's something that was showing up. Correct. At lots of sites. So all the other starter treatments had zinc in them. Mm -hmm. But 1034-0 did not have zinc in it, okay? And 1034-0 actually reduced yields relative to the check, so no starter, at two of three sites, okay? And I thought that was a little bit odd at first. Um, but as I got to looking at some of the other studies at these locations, zinc uh, increased yields in some other studies by five to seven bushels per acre, five at one site and seven at the other site. But that told me that zinc was very important to maximizing corn yield at these two sites. And when I didn't use zinc with the 1034, it reduced yields. And these were not anomalies because it happened at you know, a, a, almost every single replication in these studies. And this isn't something that's brand new in the industry, but it's something no. we often talk about when we're looking at starters. Yes. So we, we, this is not something that's just brand new. We've heard about this. But what you've probably heard about in the past maybe is that when you apply phosphorus, that phosphorus application can actually tie up to zinc, okay? And so this is something that's been kind of known on the fringes for a long time, but when you see it in real time, in person, in studies like this, it's really dramatic and it catches your attention. And so I would just like to remind folks that when you're using an infra starter or any starter or even, you know, fall applied P, that that P application can actually tie up zinc. So it's really important to add zinc to those phosphorus applications so we don't see that. Okay. So as we hit these higher yields and we're pulling in more nutrients, you know, we've talked a lot about sulfur through the years. So now we're kind of shifting gears because we kind of, we understand that a little, a lot better. Now we're talking more zinc and what we can do to increase our yields from that. Yeah. And so Katie, we were kind of talking offline here um, with sulfur, you know, 15 years ago, the recommendation was you need to put sulfur on in sandy soils or lower organic matter soils. And, and that's not the case today. I mean, Literally, the sulfur yield increases are so consistent and, and large now, every corn acre needs sulfur. You know, the level and source, and we can get into all that, but it needs sulfur, right? And so, even in the 10 years I've been here, nine years, but almost 10 years, I've seen zinc responses become more common in my studies, uh, more common and large. And, and I don't have a good explanation other than that's what I see. Great, Jake. So... What about these hybrids we're using today? You know, in the past, the genetics that we ha have are coming from the Midwest, and now we're pulling germplasm from around the world, even probably. Yep. Um, do you think that these this germplasm is requiring more zinc? So what Katie's doing is she's looking for an explanation for why I see this. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm always doing. <laughs> and uh, Katie, the truth is, I don't know. That definitely could be. You know, we're definitely you know looking always looking for higher yielding germplasm. Perhaps they're more zinc responsive. I think you brought up the point that, you know, 15 years ago, corn yields were 50 bushel lower than they are today. So zinc demand is increasing. Absolutely. Um, so I think it's likely a combination of factors why, you know, I'm seeing more consistent yield increases from zinc and larger yield increases from zinc. And I don't think we know exactly why, but surely higher corn yields, surely ge different genetic backgrounds, those all could be contributing factors. Well, Jake, we look forward to hearing more from you on November 30th when you do your research findings yes. webinar. So if you'd like to sign up for that, go to our website, www.liqua-grow.com, and you can hit the register button. It'll send you a nice little calendar invite so Dr. Jake can tell us everything he's finding out. And likely I'll get into more of the details of this study. So if you want to know more details, please join us for that webinar. And if you want to know more about zinc application and rates, uh, talk to your Liquor Grow sales rep. Thanks. Stay in the know with Liquor Grow.